Um, I've gone to concerts before where I can't sit still, for example. I mean, I look to my right and left, and sometimes I see somebody's listening to music, and they're not moving. Whoa. But I mean, I can't, so what, I can't sit still. So here you are creating a masterpiece from the energy that is flowing from what's going on, the, the rhythm. The, I mean, that's just, or the energy just in a room of people. What's yes. cool about that is uh, for some people, these events are life changing. For example, um, you can go on a date to go see Josh Webber perform, mm -hmm. and on that date, you could meet the person who becomes the mother of your children mm -hmm. and who you end up spending the rest of your life with. And so, in that moment of time, the energy, that love, is transferred to the band that's playing, which then transfers it to me. And then I transfer it onto the canvas. So at the end, what you get is a, a, like a, a Polaroid or a Rorschach of that event that you can then save. Like a lot of people save their ticket stubs. Mm -hmm. You can then uh, have a, a reproduction of this piece or the original or what have you. And remember that special day you know, like, like people buy concert t-shirts and stuff. So um, that was the idea now of the marketing of how we can uh, create uh, um, for the modern art music movement to move forward. And do you see it, I mean, I would assume so, do you see it marketing, I mean, spinning off of that because the, the idea is so sensational? Yeah, we're really trying to get organized right now. At this point, uh, we just got the uh, trademark from the U.S. government, and now we're trying to uh, make the right alignments with the right people so that we can create a, a force um, that will help progress civilization. So that's where we're at right now. We're, we're in the infancy stage. I mean, I, I can honestly tell you, I never thought that I would start a movement. And there's no guidebook on how to start a movement. I don't believe there's any courses or anything. So I've been really kind of learning this by meeting some amazing individuals who have vision and fortitude of character. And I've been uh, learning from these individuals and they've been assisting me. I think that kind of falls back to like, like attracting like. When you put yourself somewhere, all of a sudden now you said you're you're connecting with these individuals. You're starting the movement, but what's amazing is it sometimes it only takes one beat of one drum and then there are other you hear from behind the echo and all of a sudden you look and it's like, Oh my goodness, I was standing alone and now all of a sudden there's twenty people that are sitting behind you with your drums. It, it's but you're starting the movement, which is brilliant. And I'm glad to step in at this moment and I hope I'll be in another movement. I mean, just, I love the energy, of course, so. Oh, absolutely. Consider yourself a part of it. And that's Thank one you. of the reasons I wanted to come on your show uh, July 4th, the Independence Day, because, um, you know, I believe we're all the United Slaves of America at this point, and there are slaves all around the world. And what people are looking for is a true democracy, not a, a capitalist democracy, but a democracy for the people, by the people. And if you look at the Constitution and you look at the Articles and the Bill of Rights, nowhere does it say that we were supposed to be a corporate nation. And uh, a lot of the corporate interests of multinational companies have really uh, damned us. And uh, they've damned the future of generations. And uh, I think we really have to get back to the core of uh, civility and think about the way that the American Indians thought, which was seven generations forward. I've got nothing against corporations. I've had four corporations myself. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that the CEOs be less concerned with making millions of dollars that they can't take with them. Because when they're dead and they're gone, mm -hmm. really, you can't take it with them. Mm -hmm. What they should be concerned about is the legacy that they're leaving behind. And they should think seven generations forward. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can have that mind shift, and the drumbeat that I'm starting, if that can somehow resonate with those people, mm -hmm. those rich, because being rich is not a four-letter word. Well, actually, rich is a four-letter word, but it shouldn't be yeah, a negative connotation. And I think um, we can shift the mindset of people. Like, we've been too greedy. We need to change that. And interesting, too, because when I was driving over here as well, I thought to myself, okay, it is the birth of our nation, and I could have just about had any guest on believe in coincidence whatsoever. So I, I started thinking about you and your work and, and your messages and all your work and I know what you stand for now that I've got to know you. And I also too believe that it's very appropriate that you should be sharing this hour with me.
to share how you feel, and it comes through definitely through there, through your artwork. And I think this is the perfect time to talk about redemption, perhaps, if you don't mind. Let's talk a little bit about the story of Grandpa Jesus' trials. Cool. The, um, the, the story of Cracker Jesus was created out of necessity. It was created out of uh, uh, survival. I was being threatened with um, libel and slander because I was involved in a, a court case um, with a uh, law firm called Condi and Cohen that I had hired to protect my interests against an individual who got high on crack, went to work, got on his desk, and complained to his employees that he was the new Messiah and that they were now his disciples. So this individual stopped paying me rent, which you know, as a CEO, I had uh, responsibilities to the bank. And uh, the individual said, well, Jesus, don't pay the rent. And so I said, well, we've got a problem here, because Bank of America is not going to believe I'm ready to the Messiah unless I get footage of you walking across the pool, which you couldn't right. do. So um, anyway, the attorneys that I hired to protect my interests ended up uh, uh, suing me. So it became a, a huge conflict of interest, and I was told by the attorneys that if I tried to uh, report them to the Florida Bar, that they would keep me in what's called a litigation vortex, because basically it doesn't cost them anything to go to work and just file frivolous lawsuits. That's when I started doing my research, and I realized that there was a dangerous situation that exists, which is now being shown with uh, certain court cases that are high profile. That if you uh, don't have competent and ethical attorneys, it can really destroy the fabric of our Constitution, which is what's happening right now. I mean, because these lawyers are passing laws that are disgraceful. So anyway, um, I created this story in four and a half weeks because I had a show to do, and it was uh, called the Crackhead Jesus Exhibit that I was doing for Art Basel 2005 with an individual called Jerry Kelly on South Beach. It was from our Basel week. So um, I created this story real quick in four and a half weeks, and somehow it resonated with the audience. The original name was Redemption, the story of the crack and Jesus trials, but it's since morphed into uh, the primary character of the story, which is Crackhead Jesus. And the title of the short that was made is Crackhead Jesus the movie, which has nothing at all to do with Jesus Christ.